Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the word droop. We're gonna get into what droop screws are actually used for in radio control cars, and then we're gonna see a few examples. And then if you don't have droop screws on your specific radio control vehicle, there's even a solution for you in order to get some of these advantages if this suits your specific driving style or radio control vehicle application. Let's get started started and figure out, define exactly what droop is. In order to define the word droop, I'm going to use a quick example from the full-size car world. For those of us who have jacked up a car in the past, we know that as we jack up the car, that car's tire actually remains on the ground for quite some time until finally we get to that point where the tire is then released from the ground and the car is fully jacked up in the air. Now let's take a look at what that actually looks like here on a radio control car. I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. Here we have the Latraxis Teton to help us understand Drew. Now I'm gonna take this vehicle and I'm gonna put it in its natural resting position. So I move the suspension around a bunch of times and with the weight and everything in this vehicle, this is where the car naturally just wants to sit here. So you can see that the lower control arm is actually pretty level with the actual rest of the car. It's right there at a level position, which makes this very easy for us. Now droop is considered from this natural resting position to when the car suspension, which is located right there, is at its maximum. In order to get the suspension as maximum, I'm gonna go and jack up this car with my finger here, and you can see as we go and lift the car up, the tire is not off the ground. Now I feel a little bit more weight and I'm starting to actually lift the car up. And you can see that the tire is now off the ground. So the actual amount of droop that we have is from this position to about that position where it's level. That is going to be the definition of droop, anything within this range. Now there's several advantages to having this sort of thing called droop. You can imagine that for this off-road vehicle, if you actually lift up one side, this vehicle is gonna have the suspension on the left side start to compress, but this is going to actually lift up the chassis of the vehicle, causing this to actually lift up as well. Now you can see if I push a little bit higher there, the tire starts to get off the ground. But what you notice is that this tire is got some clearance there and then the chassis is actually up in the air a little bit higher but your traction is still going to be quite considerable on this tire because it's still touching the ground. Here we have a Arma Limitless and this vehicle is going to show us how much droop it has here. For the chassis point that I'm going to jack up I'm going to put my finger here on this area and you see as soon as I start to jack up the car in this position that tire comes right up in the air. Therefore this vehicle here has zero droop. The Latrax Teton has a greater than zero amount of droop. You can see the distance there that we're getting from that resting position all the way to the top. And then if we look at this 1 8 scale buggy, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to lift up this part of the chassis and you can see vehicle's tire comes up right away. So this vehicle as well as the Arma Limitless literally has zero droop. Now what does this mean for us? Well, the fact that those vehicles have zero droop means that it's probably not going to be the best for an off-road vehicle. And that makes a lot of sense because those are full bore on-road vehicles and high performance on-road vehicles to say the least. Now the question is, if we don't have any droop on these two vehicles, why do we care about an adjustable droop screw? Well, if we look at the suspension of our Arma Limitless, we have a ton of preload on that spring by moving this upper retainer from the top here, threading it all the way down to the bottom. This makes the spring already in compression, preloading the suspension. So there's quite a bit of force already on that lower control arm, meaning that our suspension is going to be really tight to actually push this thing down, which it is, and we have just verified that. Now what we know is when we lift the vehicle up, it's already at its full extension. Now if we go and adjust the droop screw, the droop screw is gonna help us achieve a different ride attitude or ride height. This is where we get the advantage on our on-road vehicle, super important to us. So if I go and show you, I don't, I'm not actually adjusting the droop screw right now, but if I go and compress this a little bit, we can have a different ride height just by setting the droop screw. I'll show you the droop screw here on the front end of this Arma Limitless, and you'll be able to see what that looks like. So I'd imagine it would be somewhere tucked in on the inner side of the control arm here and if we get in there tight we can see that screw right there 
right just above my blurred out finger there. So that is the droop screw and if we go and fasten that in, it's gonna prevent motion because it's gonna go down and start to drive on the, the uh, metal that's beneath it, which is going to push this control arm up and give us a different attitude there. Now this is a lot easier for me to demonstrate and show with the 1 8 scale buggy here on the other side. This uses a screw that is accessible right from the bottom of the vehicle. So I'm gonna flip this over and you can see the actual droop screw right there. You can see this piece of aluminum actually jet out from the chassis and go to this point right where you see that screw located right there at the end. Now that screw, if I actually loosen it and pull it out further, it's going to push that control arm up. If I compress the suspension, you can see that screw and its location there. And if you go and unscrew it, it's going to rest in there, contact this a lot earlier than this. It'll contact it, let's say here. And this adjustment is what gets us the different ride attitude or ride height here in the rear end. So this is one cool way to be able to change and adjust the ride attitude of your radio controlled vehicle. Now I have another example here, and this is from an old 100 mile per hour vehicle. This is probably at least 12 years old or so. We take a look at this guy and you could see that in the rear it's got this droop screw that would be located essentially in this area right here contacting the metal and I have not ever used it because I'm not so worried about droop in the rear end on an on-road vehicle. It is already very low to the ground in the rear. But take a look at the front. You can see the location of where the droop screw should be, which is that round hole, and there's no metal there to be found on the chassis. So essentially, this is completely useless to me in order to adjust the suspension. If you wanted to have adjustment here, what you would need is some sort of chassis material that would extend out in this area past the hinge point, which is right here. Having the droop screw over on this side will allow you to actually compress the suspension up forward so that we can actually gain some advantage there. Now that we know exactly what droop is, how we actually control it, most on-road vehicles have zero droop, but we can use the droop screw when we have the suspension all tightened up and preloaded. We can use it to set the maximum suspension extension which then allows us to change the ride attitude or ride height of the vehicle and this is especially important for radio controlled on-road vehicles and even more especially important for those of you who are running the speed run vehicles which is essentially three of the four vehicles that's currently on this table now as it's related to the front end of the vehicle we want to make sure that we have a ride angle that if this is the nose of the vehicle we can have the nose down and the rear up this is going to give Give us some positive force as wind comes into that vehicle and is pushed upward meaning that our vehicle is going to be pushed downward to the ground and that's what we want to keep the vehicle on the ground now i didn't have that ability on the 2010 100 mile per hour vehicle and the reason is is because they probably didn't think about that or put the material in there as it was not a huge factor back in the day now this led to all kinds of trouble for me to get this vehicle up to any sort of speed it would fly away at speed of around 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. And you can imagine how difficult it would be to push this up another 50 or 60 kilometers an hour from there. Now, switching gears back to the off-road vehicles, droop screws still have a purpose there if you have them. A lot of off-road vehicles probably don't have them because they're not quite as important or critical. Now, one of the things that you want to do if you do have them is set your droop screw so that you still have a positive amount of droop where it's not zero like our on-road examples, but you want to have the droop screw set so that you don't have the piston within your strut being bottomed out every time you see or the car sees full extension of that strut. What this is going to do is it's going to prevent your piston from slamming into the bottom of the cylinder on your strut, preventing all kinds of wear right there. Now if you don't have any type of droop screws in your radio control vehicle. That doesn't mean that you don't have access to this. There are still some other ways to get around this. I know back in the day that people would use a piece of string, they would tie it like fishing line of a certain caliper. They would tie it in such a way where it actually be mounted on the bottom screw that goes through the lower control arm up to your upper end wherever that suspension is mounted they would tie a loop of string so that it would hit the full deflection and that's when that string would be tight and this is the way that would be they would be able to control the amount of ride height for example or droop in their application depending on what they're actually trying to do 
There is another way that you can do it as well, and that's with a suspension limiter. Now we're gonna head to the whiteboard to quickly take a look at what that is. All right, here is the whiteboard. We can see the actual uh, piston and cylinder that we have. So this is going to be the cylinder from your strut assembly drawn in red here. And you can see the piston here is drawn in blue. This would be inside of the strut, of course, and then you'd have the rod that comes down and goes to your lower control arm. Now what you would have in an instance with the suspension where you're trying to limit the actual movement and motion is this limiter. You place these limiters right inside of the suspension so that the piston can't actually go further down and occupy this space down at the bottom of the cylinder. The limiter prevents it there and your maximum distance is gonna be from the top of your strut all the way to this new position which is going to be defined as this area right here. This is how you're able to go and limit the total amount of travel if you don't have any of the other options. Well, there you go, guys. Very important for those of you who are running speed run cars, as well as for those of you that are running the on-road track race vehicles too. We can adjust our suspension in a way that we can set our ride height, and then we can utilize those preload uh, retainers to go and preload our suspension that matches the specific ride height that we have. So lots of different adjustments that we can make among the rest of the suspension adjustments that we can make too. So all of this combines to a lot of tuning for us to really set our cars correctly. Now you don't need to go and set your car to some specific details to achieve you know, the minimum goals or some of the moderate type of running. It's really when you're gonna to start to push your vehicle that all of these things combine into a perfectly well-balanced vehicle to hit your goals. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.